for the word of prayer. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the opportunity you have given us to come today on this special Sabbath to share your word. You chose us to be your stewards and we pray that you give us the understanding and the knowledge from heaven so that we can grasp, grasp this message. Our Lord, we've prayed. Amen. We are under the theme, God first. And that is what we are going to cover the entire week. Stewardship is all about making God first in everything. And that is where it all begins. Because when you understand God, and you understand and you acknowledge his ownership of everything that you have and everything you are, you put him first. Simply that is the meaning of the theme. But in order to make God first, there are things that we should follow. In order to make God first, there are things that we have to learn that will pull us to make us to make him first in our lives. And the entire week, we are going to be covering different topics in order to help us to grow as stewards of the Lord. Today, we are going to talk about the seven principles of stewardship. The things that a steward should know. I decided to talk about this because I have you all here today. So we wanted to cover a lot in just a few minutes. Because I know that maybe in the week here and there you might not attend. So I, I, I wanted to cover the entire thing. And I know that during the week we shall be handling little by little of all of this. We want to thank Bunga Central Church for the contributions that they do towards the work of the Lord. Through returning tithes and offering. And all the money that you give to support the work of the Lord and support his mission on earth. And I want to tell you that you should continue doing so. Because God chose us to be here to support his mission. We are here to serve him and that's the only reason why we are still alive. Making him first in everything that we do. That is the purpose of our calling. You are here because you have the ability to serve the Lord. You are here because you have the means to extend his mission. You are here because God has instilled in you the abilities to make his kingdom prosper on this planet. You are here because you are a special person for a special purpose in a special time. Therefore, you are a steward of the Lord. And that is the reason why he chose you to be here today. And you must understand these principles because they, they become... Uh, the things that drive us fast towards being faithful stewards. And it all begins with Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 that uh, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. But you can follow me in your respective versions. In the beginning God created heavens of everything that you see and everything that you don't see. Acknowledging the ownership uh, of God to everything that is tangible and everything that we cannot touch. Everything seen and unseen was created by God. And stewardship starts with this principle, acknowledging God's ownership on everything that we have. God's ownership of everything that we have, our bodies, our wealth, our time, the environment around us, and even the natural talents that he bestowed upon us. He owns everything, starting with me and my body. And when I understand that, that God owns everything that I have and everything around me, I get to understand that I'm just a steward. I'm not the owner. We don't have ownership. We are just stewards of those things that God gave us. The bodies that we have belong to the Lord. The talents and the natural abilities, the gifts that we have, belong to the Lord. The time that God has given us belongs to the Lord. And almost everything that we have, if not all things, they belong to the Lord. And we are just stewards on this planet. 
And God expects us to be so much faithful as we handle the things that he gave us. Stewardship begins when we acknowledge that God owns everything. And when we, when we get to know that God owns our bodies, then we will feed them, then we will dress the bodies, then we will do everything on our bodies, not for our own glorification, but for his glorification. When we acknowledge God's ownership over all wealth and treasures that we have, then we will use our money, we will use our treasures, we will use our wealth to support his kingdom. When we acknowledge that God owns even our time, we will use it to glorify his name. When we acknowledge that God owns even the environment around us, we shall relate with it in a way that glorifies his name. Therefore, stewardship starts when someone acknowledges God's ownership over everything seen and unseen. Not until you acknowledge that God owns everything, you cannot be a faithful steward. And stewardship cannot sprout in the life of such a person. In the beginning, God created heavens and earth. And we were the last to be created. There is a reason why God created you on the sixth day. He first created Everything that you see and everything that, that is microscopic that you cannot see. And then he put you in the garden to be a steward of everything. There is a reason why God created you last. The reason planet. So since you don't own anything, now the issue is you have to understand that everything was just given to you. And if everything was just given to you, you are just a steward. And you have to make sure that you keep it, uh, that you take care of it as the one who gave it to you once. The second principle. When God created Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, there are words that are so interesting here. Genesis chapter 1 20, verse 26 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish, over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. God said, let us make man in our own image. The second principle is that faithful stewards should be similar to God, because stewardship means similarity. When God wanted to create a steward, he created a creature that is similar to his own likeness. God did not make monkeys stewards. God did not place all his creation in hands of insects. God did not make anything a steward except you. Why? Because you are the only creature that is similar to him. If you want to be a faithful steward, you have to be similar to God because we cannot be steward not until we are like him. We should have the same mind like that one of Jesus Christ. We should have the same responsibility like that of Jesus Christ. We have to be similar to God in his likeness in order to be faithful stewards. The reason why we fail to be faithful stewards, it is because we are similar to that of God. When you look at things in a way that is different from the way God sees things, you cannot be a faithful steward. You must have those eyes of God. You must have that understanding that is similar to the one of God. You must have the same ambitions and purposes like those ones of God. When God wanted a steward, he created Adam and Eve in his own image. Which means that without similarity, we cannot be faithful stewards. You must pray to God so that you get similar to him and then you become a faithful steward. You can easily return to God when you have the same mind like that of him. A mind that is full of love. A mind that is full of happiness. A mind that is full of generosity. A mind that is mission-oriented. That, that mission 
You cannot give tithes and offering with, with selfishness in your life. You cannot give tithes and offerings if you are not mission oriented. You cannot give tithes and offering if you don't have love for sinners. We must be similar to God if we are to become faithful towards. That is why when God created Adam and Eve, he created them in his own image because he knew that they were to be stewards and they had to be in his image if they were to do the responsibility well. Therefore, we should be similar to our creator if we want to be faithful towards. Three. In Genesis chapter 1, Verse 28, after creating them, the Bible says that uh, as God blessed them and said to them, be faithful and multiply, fill the earth, subdue it. Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. There is a principle of increase in stewardship, a principle of multiplication. Stewardship means to increase, to multiply. In us, God already started growth immediately when we were created. God knows that you will always grow from one step to another. In order to be a faithful steward, you must increase. You must grow. Something must happen to bring in positive results. When God gives you the talent, he, he knows that when you live a life of a faithful steward, those talents will grow. God wants to see your talents growing. God wants to see your wealth growing. God wants to see your time being used very well for your growth. Stewardship means increasing. It means to multiply. God created you to subdue this world. God created you to increase and multiply. In you, there is that ability to increase. There is that ability to grow. There is that ability to, to move from one level to another of understanding. And that is the reason why God made you stewards. And that, is, uh, that one is one of the blessings that we get when we become faithful stewards. Increase. You should not sit in church. You spend here 20 years without increasing in your understanding of God. Your knowledge of God should increase. Your level of service must increase. Your time for God must increase. Everything that God gave you, you have to acknowledge his ownership upon everything by increasing. If we don't increase, it is a sign that we are not faithful stewards. God told us to multiply, to increase, because he knows that that ability is there. We should not have a descending curve in Christianity. It should be ascending. We have to aspire to reach higher levels of understanding of God. And that is the reason why we are stewards. God has brought us here to increase in knowledge and in understanding. To increase our levels of worship. To improve on everything that we have. God gave, God gave you abilities and natural talents because he wants them to increase. God has given you time because he wants you to use it to increase. God has given you your body and he wants to see it increasing in the betterment of your life. You should eat to make sure that your health increases. You should dress to make sure that the glory of God increases among those people who look at you. You should use your natural abilities and gifts to increase because God wants us to increase and that's among the principles of stewardship. You must increase. You should not be a person or a Christian who descends each and every day. The spirituality of your family should increase. The urge to work for God must increase. 
the level at which you serve him should increase daily. That is stewardship. Stewardship means increase. When God made Adam and Eve out of the dust, Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, he tells us that uh, then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. When God created you, he breathed into my and your own nostrils the breath of life, the breath giving the breath that gave life, the life-giving breath. And there is a reason why God breathed into our nostrils. That was the spark that something should start in our lives. And it is by the power of that breath that we live. We have to recognize that there is power within us. The power of the Holy Spirit that will help us to be good stewards of the Lord. There is no way we can be faithful stewards, not until we use that power within us that God gave us from creation. You are so weak, but God is too strong. So when you use that strength that God put in you at creation, you will be able to live as a faithful steward. God has decided to make you live. And when he does so, he expects a lot from you. He knows that you are so helpful. He knows that you are so beneficial. He knows that in you, there are abilities to do something special for his work. He knows that you can change things in life. He knows that you can change this church. He knows that you can change that department. He knows that you can change how things are moving today. He knows that you can correct things. All that ability is in you because you are living. And that's why he calls you to be a faithful steward. Therefore, when he breathed into our nostrils the breath of life, he was giving us the ability to live as faithful stewards. Just because you are living, it is a sign that God loves you. It is a sign that you have something to accomplish. It is a sign that you have to grow. It is a sign that you can change things. So, use that opportunity as you still have the breath of life in your nostrils to be a faithful steward because you can. Therefore, when God created Adam and Eve, the fourth principle says that uh, we must recognize God's power in our lives. When God created them, he put them in the garden of Eden. That is Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. Stewardship, the fifth principle, means to be responsible. Stewardship is responsibility. He took them to the garden of Eden to dress it. He took them to the garden of Eden to take care of it. Stewardship means responsibility. A faithful steward cannot sit back and see things being done. He is involved in being the things. Faithful stewards don't see as things happen. They make things happen. Stewardship means responsibility. We cannot sit back and see things happen. We should make them happen because we are the stewards of the Lord. God has given you people all the gifts that this church needs to prosper. Others are preachers, others are pastors, others are prophets, others are musicians, others are teachers, others are leaders. Everything that we need in order for Bunga Central Church to move forward is here and is within us. Everything that we need to make this choir prosper is within us. Everything that we need to make this church grow is within us. And God is saying we have to be responsible people. We should not look at things going wrong and we don't act. We should get involved to make things right. Faithful stewards don't sit back and watch as others perform. Faithful stewards get involved. They make things happen. If you see that there is something that we need to change in this church, it means you have received a calling. 
When you look at the church choir and you see that something has to change, that is a calling. When you look at the church structure and you see that something needs to change, that is a calling for your wealth to contribute. When you look at the choir and you see that something needs to change, that is a calling for your voice. God has called us in different ways. And he has given talents and abilities to us to use them for the glorification of his kingdom. Stewardship means responsibility. We should not be church members who sit back in the pews and see how things work. We should be church members who are involved in everything that is being done. A steward makes things happen. A steward doesn't criticize people. A steward takes control of things. You are a steward of God. And you should not sit back there to criticize people who are doing things here. You should get involved because that is the only way to make things work. So stewardship is responsibility. God has not called any person to sit. God has called every person to do what he can. In you, there is that small ability that you can use for the glorification of his kingdom. And that is stewardship. God calls for our time. He needs our time. Because stewards should be responsible people. Therefore, God needs your time. We have tight schedules in life. But we can fail to get an hour for God in the entire 24 hours of the day. You have an hour for your friends. You have two hours for WhatsApp and Facebook and social media. You have eight hours for your bosses at work. You have six hours for your children. You have four hours for your husband. But you don't have 15 minutes for God. Then you are not a faithful steward. You are not responsible enough. If in your schedule for a day, there are no 30 minutes for God. You are not responsible at all. Stewardship means responsibility. It means taking care of other things and not forgetting God. That's why God told Adam, you go to the garden of Eden and dress it and take care of it. You are not in the garden of Eden to sit, to relax, to enjoy eating and drinking, to enjoy the scenery and the tranquility of uh, the garden of Eden. God said, no, you are not there to enjoy. You are going there to work. Therefore, if you were steward here, you were not called in this church to enjoy the worship of this congregation, to enjoy the church choir singing, to enjoy the pews that are cleaned by deacons every day, to enjoy the beautiful church structure, to enjoy a massive parking where you can park your car and it is safe, to enjoy the security around here. God is saying you must be a responsible Christian because you were steward. Therefore, stewardship means responsibility. That's why you call them to dress it and to take care of it. You see? And after that, verse 16 and 17, Genesis chapter 2, it says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat, for it you shall surely die. Sixth principle, stewardship is sacrifice. God is telling Adam and Eve in verse 16 and 17 that of every any other tree in the garden you can eat, but this one, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you should not eat because the day you will eat of it, you will surely die. Stewardship means sacrifice. God is telling Adam and Eve that at all cost, you should not eat this tree. Not because it is sour, not because it is poisonous, not because you cannot eat it that you will fall as you climb the tree, but this tree has been put in the garden to teach you that I'm the owner of the garden and you should not touch it. Sorry, eat of it. Why? Because it is mine. Stewardship means sacrifice. Stewardship means that even when it hurts, you have to do it. 
Yes, looking at the tree in the middle of the garden, maybe Adam and Eve wanted to eat of it. Maybe the fruits looked good. Maybe the fruits looked appeasing. But God is telling them, you must live a sacrificial life. Whenever you look at that tree, don't eat of it, even when you are hungry, even when you are what? At all cost, do this role. Please, sacrifice. There is no way you can pay tithes and offerings if you don't sacrifice. I want to tell you, there is no way you can do it. Stewardship means sacrifice. Yes, you are poor, you've not paid rent, you've not worked for 17 months, your car is down, you have, to, you, you have to work upon it, you need the dresses, you need the parties, you need Valentine gifts, you need all the stuff. But God is saying, sacrifice everything and do the role. Stewardship is not for people who cannot sacrifice. Yes, Pork is delicious, maybe, because I've, I've never tasted it. Maybe it is delicious. But God is saying it is unclean for food. You have to sacrifice. Stewardship means sacrifice. It means that at all cost, you have to stand for God and make him fast. You are not going to eat of this tree. Because the day you will eat, you will surely die. You have to sacrifice in order to be a good steward. You have to sacrifice your time. There are people who don't have time for God, even for his service. They are too busy to serve the Lord. They are not ready to sacrifice an hour in their lives for mission. We are stewards of time. Because time was given to us by God. You cannot use time for mission, not until you can sacrifice. You will sacrifice the time for your girlfriend to serve God. You will sacrifice time for your work to serve God. You will sacrifice time for your children to serve God. If I am not ready to sacrifice, I cannot use my time for God's glorification. Most of us don't want to pay that price. We don't want to sacrifice for God. We are not ready to pay that price of not putting on as the world puts on in order to glorify God. Stewardship means sacrifice. There are many fashions on the road and everywhere. In many boutiques, there are many fashions. And when you put on that cloth, everyone will say, yeah, she's very smart. But there are those clothes that you need to sacrifice not to put them on in order to glorify God. I don't know whether you are ready to sacrifice, but if you are not ready to sacrifice for God, you cannot be a faithful steward. You cannot. You cannot use those talents if you don't sacrifice. There is a lot that will take us. A lot will take us. There is a lot that occupies our time. There is a lot that occupies our wealth. There is a lot that occupies our money. There is a Lord that occupies our bodies. The devil is fighting a Lord to make sure that you are fully occupied. But God is saying, sacrifice. And when you learn sacrifice, then you've learned stewardship. Amen? So learn to sacrifice time. Learn to sacrifice the things you eat. Maybe they are delicious, but they are not good for your body. Learn to sacrifice. That fashion is good, and everyone is talking about it, but it's not good for the child of God. Learn to sacrifice. As we conclude, verse 17, we read. We read verse 17. Uh, Verse 17 says, But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in that day you eat of it, you shall surely die. The seventh principle. Stewardship is obedience. We cannot talk about stewardship and we forget to talk about obedience. Obeying God at all cost. God is telling stewards, Stewards who are here, that you need to be obedient. Obedience is a prerequisite.
for any person to be a faithful steward. Obedience opens up the blessings of God to come upon us. God has already blessed you. God has already blessed your families. That is why you don't become a good steward to receive blessings from God. You become a good steward to enjoy the blessings that God has already given to you. We don't become stewards to receive blessings. We become stewards to enjoy the blessings that God has already given to us. The reason why you are not enjoying the blessings that God has already given to you, it is because you are not a practicing faithful steward. You don't give tithe to be blessed by God. God has already blessed you. Before even you give tithe, the blessings are, are there for you. But he tells you to give tithe because that is the only way to enjoy those already given blessings. Amen. God has, God has already blessed you with a happy home. So you only need obedience to have it. God has, has already given you blessings. And when you give tithe, you know when you refuse to give tithe, it is as a result of selfishness. You think of yourself more than you think of God and his mission. Mark at this. Selfishness does not only stop at the refusal to give tithe. Selfishness continues to even the remaining money that you, that you are going to use for your own purpose. God tells you that you should be filled with the love and when you are filled with the love you give tithe when you are filled with the selfishness you don't give and that selfishness does not stop when you don't give tithe the selfishness comes in even when you are spending the money you didn't give for tithe and that's the reason why you be cursed god says be filled with love and when you get filled with love, then you will pay tithe and offerings. If that love disappears, you won't pay tithe. But when love, dis when love disappears, it is not only tithe that is affected. Let me repeat this statement. When love disappears in your life, it is not tithes that are only affected. When love disappears, your family is affected. When love disappears, your children are affected. When love disappears, your workplace is affected. When love disappears, everything you touch is affected by your selfishness. Therefore, the blessings of God come in when we learn to love him. When you give tithe, you learn to love God. And that love of God within you will touch each and every component of your life and you will be blessed. Amen. Don't give tithe to appease God. Don't give tithe to receive blessings from him. Don't give tithe as an agreement. I'm giving you tithe, give me blessings. It is not an exchange. God is saying, give tithe because you love me. And when you have that love in me, the entire thing will be blessed. Amen? Therefore, my brother and sister, stewardship means obedience. When you obey God, you test the blessing of obedience. The reason why you are struggling at your workplace is lack of obedience. The reason why your family is struggling is lack of obedience to his word. The reason why you are being affected here and there, you don't have obedience. And I call upon you in this stewardship week to attend so that you learn a lot about obeying God. But stewardship means obedience. So God tells them that when you obey me, you will receive the blessings from heaven. Amen. The last one. Stewardship is accountability. Accountability. When they ate of the tree, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 9 to 11, but, in the Lord, but the Lord God called the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you not to eat? 
Finally, we will be required of accountability. All our work shall be judged. God has entrusted us with our bodies. How much have we used them for the glorification of his name? God has entrusted us with gifts and natural abilities. How have we used them for the glorification of his name? God has given us wealth. How have we used it for the glorification of his name? God has given us a good environment. How have we related with it for the glorification of his name? God has given you time. How have we used it as a steward? Finally, we must give accountability. The man we read of in Matthew chapter 25, who told his servants, he gave one five talents, two talents, and another one one talent. And when he came back, they had to give accountability of everything that they received. My brothers and sisters, we are closing this message. One day, I and you, we have to give accountability of that the Lord has given to us. And when the time of accountability comes, what... Uh, what can I say? When the time of accountability comes, what will we bring before him? How have you used your wealth? Some of us, the monies we get, are only used to solve our issues. And we shall continue to solve them until we die. But we should use our wealth also to glorify the name of the Lord. How have you used your time? How have you used your talents how have we used your abilities? How have we used uh, everything that God has given to you, even your body? Therefore, there is time for accountability. And God came to the garden. He found Adam and Eve hiding. And they had to give accountability of the role he gave them. One day the Lord will ask for accountability. And it is my prayer today that when God asks for accountability, the words that he told the other faithful steward, in Matthew 25, 21, should be the words that you receive. That you are a faithful steward. Enter the joy of your master. God wants us to be faithful stewards so that we enter the joy of our master. God doesn't want us to be thrown outside. God wants us to enjoy the happiness of being our God. And the only way to enjoy the blessings that God has given to us is becoming faithful stewards. Therefore, those principles are so important for any person who has the ambitions to become a faithful steward. And I pray to God to enable us all to put him first in everything. Because if we do so, our Lord is going to change not only in our homes, not only in our lives, but in the entire church as a whole. When we become faithful stewards, I want to tell you, the Lord shall fill this church with his spirit to finish his mission in this region. May the Lord bless us so much.